Welcome back. The Organization of American States was created in 1948 to promote peace, justice, and to defend the sovereignty of its members. Today, the OAS has 35 independent states and establishes the main political, judicial, social, and governmental forum in the hemisphere. Although critics argue the organization has lost its purpose, many of its operations remain strong. Its electoral observation missions and the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights are still working. And despite the emergence of other groups like UNASUR and CELAC, the OAS is still the only regional body that includes the United States. In order to regain its influence, the OAS has created a strategic vision, a commission led by Ambassador Emilio Rabasa from Mexico. Ambassador, welcome to the show. First of all, tell us more about the strategic vision. And do you think the OAS has lost its influence, as some others have said? Well, I think you made a very good summary of the um, real reality of the OAS at this moment. Uh, founded, as you mentioned, 1948 in Bogota, Colombia. Uh, it was then a quite different international context led by Cold War at that time. Now we are in the global context. So for this new context where multiculturalism has grown with all those organizations that you mentioned, UNASUR, MERCOSUR, CARICOM, CELAC, uh, etc. So the idea is to pass a resolution that will contain this new vision of what do we want of the OAS in this century and in this world. What do you think is the most important? What is the priority right now? I think we have to strengthen those things in which we are good at. You know? And certainly, you mentioned two of them, democracy and human rights. Fortunately, for the first time, uh, all member states are democratic states with different levels of development. That's true. But democratic states that hold regular elections. Um, therefore, it is very important to strengthen the democratic institutions that we have given uh, for our uh, countries. Uh, there are several ways for doing that. Among them, the ones you mentioned, the so-called um, missions of observation, which have become highly important. For example, the, rec the recent elections in El Salvador, the recent election in Costa Rica, in Panama, they all called for um, missions of uh, observation that were considered very, very important for those countries and for the region. Uh, some say that the OAS is broke and that the United States and Canada are the only countries paying its share. What is your characterization of that? I don't think it's broke. I think it has certainly financial um, difficulties, yes, um, some of which arouse of the unequal distribution of quotas. Uh, it is not true that only the United States and Canada are paying their, their, their quotas, um, almost every state paying, but on such an unequal basis that uh, four or five countries account for more than 90 percent of the regular budget out of 35. So there we have a structural disequilibrium in the distribution of quotas. The United States is uh, accounting for my, more than 50 percent, and there has been a new law of Congress to lower that down to not more than 50 percent, which will mean a new redistribution. But I do believe that that's another uh, uh, matter, another issue that we have to face very soon, a new redistribution of quotas so um, everyone contributes, uh, of course, according to the size of the economy, the demography, etc., but in a better way than just leaving uh, to four or five countries the whole burden of the budget. Ambassador, 35 independent states right now, do you see a day where there could be a 36, as in Cuba? being part of the OAS. I would hope so. Uh, let me uh, recall that in the 60s, Mexico was the only uh, member state that opposed the um, expulsion of Cuba. Uh, in the 90s, there was a resolution that uh, left without effect that one, that therefore they gave us the reason that we did right in, in opposing that. I think that the whole system would benefit if uh, Cuba comes back. But it is a matter not only 
of the other states who have already resolved that uh, doors are open to Cuba, but also to the Cubans to accept to return to the OAS. I think we will all, even the United States, be benefited by having Cuba return to the OAS. Ambassador Emilio Rabasa, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for giving me this space to talk to your auditorium, and I am pleased to have this word about the strategic vision of the OAS. Coming up. The dangerous journey that thousands of kids are taking without their parents. Like I start walking in the, in the, in the wilderness, and I don't know where I'm at, but I'm thirsty, and I'm hungry, and I drink the river water. America's next.